Welcome to Hims TV's deep dive on artificial intelligence and machine learning. AI is already leading to major transformations in how healthcare is delivered and paid for. From clinical decision support to cybersecurity to revenue cycle and predictive analytics, advanced algorithms are enabling big real world advances and getting more intelligent by the day. There are major hurdles to getting AI right, but its promise is real and it's already here. First, some basic definitions are in order. Artificial intelligence primarily focuses on the question of how do you get computers to behave in an intelligent manner. Um, now you could imagine that's done in multiple ways. You could either do it using curated knowledge, and the idea there is that you have knowledge that exists based on physiology or other knowledge bases that we have access to, and you're essentially just trying to embed that into a computational system and get it to follow that logic and behave in a somewhat intelligent manner. So for example, you know, if a temperature reading is 102, you know, the computer can say, well, this is likely to be a case of someone having an inflammatory response, having fever, and that's the computer behaving in an intelligent manner, but again, it's based on hardwired knowledge that's derived previously. Machine learning, which is sort of the other form of artificial intelligence, focuses on this question of how do you take data itself and learn from it, come up with new knowledge that's derived from this data directly, and then use that to get systems to behave in an intelligent manner. So it goes beyond just the, the basic notion of AI as getting things to behave in a smart manner, and actually adds to that another dimension where that knowledge itself is derived from the data. There are challenges with AI related to basic data governance, algorithmic bias, integrations within clinical workflows, clinician trust, maintenance and management, strategic deployments, and more. The challenge, of course, for everyone is we're trying to deal with this massive influx of data that we're getting from all of our other tools, all of our other systems, and artificial intelligence as a concept will help us automatically process through a lot of that data and help us make decisions, but you still see today people believe that it will, it requires no care and feeding, you know, much more like the sort of sci-fi version of what we think of artificial intelligence. There's no management of it, no need to do anything. And that simply isn't true. We, we absolutely have to see it for what it is and use that tool. The key understanding is to know that it's, it's not on its own. You have to have a good plan for how you're going to implement artificial intelligence-based tools. You need people involved to make smart decisions about the findings. If threats are found, if data has been lost into the public space, you can't rely on that tool to just blindly do what you need it to do. It still requires smart decisions by humans and security professionals, and that planning to incorporate the human element into it is how you become successful with taking advantage of those technologies right now. Correctly deployed, AI can have huge benefits for healthcare. By automating basic and time-consuming clinical and administrative tasks, it can help free up more time with patients and restore some joy to the practice of medicine. Physicians are spending you know, close to 70% of their time right now on administrative tasks and not spending as much time ba based upon you know, patient interactions. And, and it leads to other problems in, in that patient-physician collaborative environment. Yep. Yep. It keeps them very focused on that primary event in front of them. And we start to lose the dynamic of whole person health. What is their whole health profile? It's a great teaching moment to be in front of your physician to think about your health in a more holistic way. And we need to provide the tools for the physicians to know that, hey, they might be coming in for the common flu or some sciatica or back pain uh, types of issues, but really, at the same time, there could be a drug interaction that just needs to be uh, addressed at that particular moment in time. How do we actually make those patient interactions more efficient and their administrative processes more efficient at the same time? And the best way to do that is to enable that through automation, and AI is the future to that automation. AI is already having a big impact on personalized and precision medicine. Its changes are being felt not just in primary care, but also in specialties such as cardiology. Big data, in combination with machine learning algorithms, is enabling advanced clinical decision support. A computer and a machine, if it's smart, will enable the doctor to get back into a more one-on-one -on -one relationship with the patient, because a lot of the work, documentation, and decision making will be taken out of the doctor's hands, at least uh, when the doctor's in the room with the patient. And I think it will be, at the same time, more personalized because 
will be practicing a much higher level of precision medicine so that patients will be getting a different treatment even with the same medical condition because it's more uh, precision medicine. In specialty care, uh, there's lots of really interesting things going on, whether it's radiology or pathology yeah. or cardiology. Again, using more and more data leveraged with AI yeah. to facilitate uh, better decision making around patients, enhancing and augmenting the work that physicians are able to do yeah. with the help of AI and other technologies. AI can help health systems improve post-discharge care, enabling decreased readmissions by sifting through social determinant and chronic condition data for at-risk patients. If we can just keep you healthy, if we can make sure that when you're returning home mm -hmm. that you're stabilized and that you can return to your normal life as best as possible, and if we can send out this service and do that, mm -hmm. why not? Like that's like the smallest investment mm -hmm. for, the, for the greater good for these patients. And mm -hmm. our patients tend to have those challenges. Mm -hmm. It's really those social determinants of health that, that, that our, our patient population are really impacted by. And so mm -hmm. using this kind of service just really helps. The one thing though is like how do you pick those patients and that's why using risk, risk scores and, mm -hmm. and, and looking at those patients at highest risk mm -hmm. in order to visit them is mm -hmm. so important because you can't visit everyone, right? right? We just don't have the resources to visit everyone. Right. But what if we can get to those folks that are at the highest risk for coming back? Really at the top, at of, the the top of the list. Yes. And focus on them in this particular way mm -hmm. then all of a sudden we've really moved the needle. And, and mm -hmm. using our data in a very smart way Yes. Um, in order to support our patients. In addition to improving outcomes and enabling more proactive care, AI can help with claims adjudication, chronic disease management, population health, and revenue cycle. Predict a readmission. Predict a claim which is fraudulent or is an anomaly claim. Predict the duration of an illness or know what are the proper reimbursable codes for an illness. Predict how many encounters someone's going to have. What is Mark's healthcare cost going to be over the next four months, Mark has a chronic disease, chronic pulmonary disease or diabetes, and what is his health care risk you know, for payers then? Where should I set my stop loss points so that if Mark is over $250,000 this year in medical expense, you know, I want to get stop loss insurance and know for all my patients, employees, or health care members if I'm a payer, what's that sum total and where should I set my stop loss points? At? But not all applications of AI are benign. Cyber criminals are using machine learning to innovate their attacks, posing major challenges with regard to privacy and security. The good news is that healthcare organizations are increasingly getting better at deploying AI defensively. Perpetrators are developing new tools on a, on a regular basis, right? New offensive AI tools that leverage machine learning and artificial intelligence in order to get by the types of cyber defenses that hospitals and other organizations, governments for example, have in place to defend their IT networks from attack. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it very, very difficult to, tr to recognize an attack, an AI-based attack, um, compared to a traditional attack because AI learns as it goes. It's still it's very careful, it's very emulative, mm -hmm. which means that if you were to well, take a CEO fraud attack, which is a process where um, a CEO, an email purports to come from the CEO to the finance department telling them to wire X hundreds of thousands of dollars or, or uh, uh, other monetary f term mm -hmm. to a bank account. Many organizations have lost millions of dollars. One hospital system I was dealing with recently lost their entire payroll that was transferred out um, by, by perpetrators by this, by this very method. Wow. Um, AI learns as it goes. It would learn the language that the CEO uses in order to communicate with his or her staff right. and emulate that language perfectly so that you, know, you could be married to the CEO and you would see an e e email from the CEO and you would think it was from your husband right. Right? because it's that perfect. It's very difficult to recognize an AI-based attack. Mm -hmm. uh, you using certainly traditional tools or our cognitive ability to recognize this type of attack. And that's where defensive AI comes in, right? So we're using fire to fight fire here, mm -hmm. right? We're using defensive AI to recognize an offensive AI by the types of algorithmic uh, challenges and transformations that are taking place within uh, suspected malware. So it can identify and flag that malware, which can then be quarantined, isolated, deleted, right? I see. 
okay. uh, and we can thwart that attack. At the same time, AI is um, instantaneous, right? You have seconds to respond to an AI-based attack. I see. Whereas uh, an advanced persistent threat um, that we're seeing today, which is kind of the, 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 the current uh, top, top challenge, as it were, may, you may have many years to respond to that type of attack. Right. You need an almost nanosecond response to uh, the types of attack that we're going to see in the future. Artificial intelligence in healthcare is here, and it's here to stay. Its potential benefits are immense. The key will be how it's deployed, how widely, how effectively. Ultimately, it's going to be for the betterment. We have to find force multipliers to take advantage of the limit, or well, to deal with the limited amount of resources we have from a human and skill set perspective. We just don't have enough people to do this manually. Uh, the data is too big, the systems are too widespread, it's just not reasonable. So AI as, as, as it stands and what it will become, absolutely going to be for the betterment. But <laughs> I caveat that with saying, when implemented well, and when organizations focus on their fundamentals, right? Uh, where the, the, the bad guys have an advantage is they do their homework. You know, they know what your perimeter looks like. They know where your assets really live. And most organizations, when you ask them that question, they don't really know where, they, where their target space is. So advanced rules processing, advanced analysis, artificial intelligence, these things will be critical, but we have to start with that basic premise of we, we need to know truly what we have, we need to understand what we're trying to protect, and then we can leverage those tools to really be effective at doing that and try to stay ahead of those uh, malicious actors. When rolled out effectively and seamlessly integrated into provider workflows, AI and machine learning can have huge benefits for decision support, quality improvement initiatives, patient outcomes, personalized medicine, and population health. A great example is a postpartum mother who is talking to her smart speaker in the home after a C-section, which is a major surgery and gets interrupted, baby's crying, puts that on hold, and then can come back later and engage in that same conversation either via smart speaker or silently through a chat bot on her phone, but after hours is still able to schedule an appointment or do things like symptom checking or getting to the right access or getting escalated into a live care team member if that's what should, the situation should warrant. The reality is it's already here. I mean, conversational technology is everywhere. I think the industry's understanding of you know, people say, what is voice? What are chatbots? But at its core, it's conversational technology. And so how do we deploy that and, and make it accessible to those patients and those consumers that can really take advantage of it today? A lot of our customers are already out on the front lines doing this stuff, serving those patient populations, whether that's the 85-year-old heart failure patient with the landline or the 40-year-old you know, millennial mother of two. So it's exciting. It's a really fun time. Thank you for watching HIMSS TV's Deep Dive on Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning. This is Healthcare IT News Editor Mike Milliard, signing off.